Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham. We're at uh, the island of Jersey in the English Channel, and we're going to fly over towards the island of Guernsey. It's only about uh, 20 miles or so away over here. To get there, we're going to be flying the X Aviation uh, or X Scenery Mitsubishi MU2. It's quite an old aircraft as far as uh, X-Plane 10 goes. It was first launched in uh, 2008, I believe, but it was recently on sale over the Black Friday weekend and uh, I've tried a number of other turboprops uh, with varying degrees of uh, success. I thought I'd try the Mitsubishi MU2 just to, to give it a go. I remember reading about the Mitsubishi in uh, some of the pilot magazines maybe uh, 25 uh, years or so ago. And I remember at the time how it was remarked on what a challenging aircraft the Mitsubishi was to fly and operate. And having spent a few days flying it in uh, X-Plane 10, I can concur with that. It's, uh, it's really quite a challenging machine. But it's also really quite satisfying. When you get it all working correctly, uh, it's, uh, it's really nice to operate. It's fitted with the Garmin GNS 530, and uh, I'm going to do a couple of videos with the Mitsubishi and looking specifically at how to use the uh, GNS 530. On the basis that if you can fly the 530 in the Mitsubishi, you can also use it in uh, any of the other aircraft that use the, uh, the same GPS system, or the 430 for that matter. With X-Plane 11, the uh, Garmin units have seen some upgrades as well. I've not tried X-Plane 11 just yet. Uh, my machine, uh, my computer is relatively uh, low performance for X-Plane 11, but we'll certainly give it a try and uh, see what we can do in the next few months. But for the time being, we're in the Mitsubishi and we'll get it started up and we'll fly over towards Guernsey. Now I've looked at the uh, tutorial videos or the tutorial uh, uh, manual very briefly for the Mitsubishi just to get it started up. I don't think in my flying career I'm ever likely to get into uh, MU2 for real. They're very rare uh, in Europe and uh, there's not that many of them around anymore. So rather than study the uh, manuals to the nth degree, um, I'll just do a quick start up. We'll get the machine running and uh, off we go. Turboprops are quite challenging in most sims. I remember back in Flight Sim 2004 and Flight Sim X that turboprops were uh, notoriously difficult to model the uh, thrust levers and the, uh, the engine performance. This model's had a, a little reverse light added up here to show when the uh, thrust levers are working in the, uh, the beta range as they are at the moment. It's quite useful. Obviously, I don't think the real aircraft is this reverse light, but it does tell us when my, my joystick uh, lever is working this range here or when it's uh, changed over and it's working the flight range. We'll put it into the ground range just now. So it's quite an easy aircraft to get started. We'll turn the uh, battery on. We'll turn the inverter on. The instrument should all come to life. We'll leave the radio master switches off at the moment. We'll make sure the fuel valves are open. Uh, make sure the pressurization is uh, set off. And uh, what else have we got? We'll just hide the yoke just now. Make sure the fuel transfer is set on because we'll need that later. So I'll make sure the thrust levers or the power levers are at ground idle. Make sure the condition levers are taxi. Put the uh, start uh, switches to run. Arm the starter. On the overhead panel, uh, fasten seat belts, no smoking. Uh, put the nav lights on and we'll put the beacon on as we're about to start the engines. And all we've got to do is uh, push and hold the start button. You'll see the RPM wind up. We'll hold the start button down. You see the EGT is starting to unwind, so it's uh, looking like a good start. Once it gets to about 50-52%, it should start all by itself. It should, uh, it should self-sustain. There we go. So I release the start button. And the engine continues to accelerate. I'll talk about the condition levers in a second. It should stabilise around 72%, but you'll see it goes uh, a little bit further than that. I'll mention that just in a second. Let's get the other engine running. So flick the uh, start switch over to the left side. Verify the fuel valves on. Everything else is set correctly. Push the start button. Engine accelerating.
EGTs are sensible, fuel flow is good. Click the start to switch back to off for air start and safe. We'll put the uh, DC generators on, make sure the inverter's on, and we'll put the radio master on. That's all that's really requir required to get the machine started up. You see the reverse lights come on there. So I'll show you why I mentioned the uh, condition levers before. You notice the aircraft is in the uh, in the beta range at the moment. The, the thrust lever is in the beta range. I'll bring the uh, my joystick throttle back to the uh, closed position, and I'll go from uh, the beta range. You can see the reverse light on here, over to the flight range. And what happens is the RPM drops back off to the uh, the taxi RPM. This is correct. Uh, this this RPM is correct, and then we've got control of the condition levers. We can change the RPM. Okay, but when it's in the beta range. For some reason, it goes to the uh, takeoff and land RPM or the, the higher RPM setting. I don't think that's quite correct. So what I'll do is, uh, you know, not worry about it. We'll just set the condition levers to take off and uh, land, and we'll leave them there when we're operating on the ground. So we've started the engines. DC generators are on. Inverters are on. Uh, the GPS is alive. I'll put the transponder on, and uh, we'll set the flaps. Flaps 20. Looking down here, we'll set uh, the aileron trim, looking for just uh, less than one dot to the left, and the pitch trim. Uh, I think it's supposed to be in the green band, but I found setting it all the way down to about uh, 30, uh, right to the bottom of the white arc seems to work quite well for this. I'll point out the aircraft is at maximum weight, um, rather than at the, the lighter weights that it's usually loaded at, just so you can see some of the differences in handling it. Air conditioning, I'll set the... Uh, Pressurization altitude to 1,000 feet above the uh, field, that's about uh, 1,300, and I'll select ram air today. The departure we're going to fly in stops at 5,000 feet, so that's uh, selected in there, and the runway heading is 084, that's perfect. Bring up the GPS, and uh, with this revision of the uh, Garmin, it doesn't have the ability to load a departure uh, track, a, a standard instrument departure. So what I've got is uh, preloaded this with uh, basically Jersey, which is uh, the uh, VOR. It's out on the runway extended centre line, and then uh, Oyster, which is one of the waypoints on the uh, Oyster departure. What I'll do is I'll just select uh, Oyster. I'll click Menu, and I'll do Activate Leg. And what that means is the aircraft is trying to navigate from Jersey towards Oyster. And it's asking me to set a course of uh, 249, so I can do that just now. So what we'll do is we'll fly out on runway heading, then make a right turn towards uh, Oyster once we're past uh, 1500 feet or so. I'll put a link to the charts in the video description. So with that, we should be uh, in a good position to taxi off out the runway. Before we taxi, I'll put the taxi lights on up here. We'll put the windshield heat on as well. This is uh, where it's quite interesting. I, I've got uh, keystroke brown for the parking brake. You can see it applies the uh, foot pedal brakes here. But there's also this mechanical parking brake that you've got to click with the mouse uh, hotspot. The aircraft's quite unusual in that respect. So I'll take the brake off and it's holding it on the uh, foot brakes just now, the tool brakes. I'll release the brake, and what I'll do is I'll bring my throttle lever on the joystick back, and that brings me closer towards the uh, flight idle. It's basically advancing the thrust lever. And that should get the aircraft moving. And basically, with the uh, throttle in the fully closed position on my joystick, that's as far forward as it can get. That's just below flight idle. And as I push my joystick uh, throttle uh, lever forwards, that'll actually move the uh, thrust more towards the uh, beta setting, or more towards the uh, reverse pitch. I believe the Mitsubishi's uh, model of the uh, the Garrett engine here is quite, well, not quite simplified. I believe there's some simplifications on it. I find when selecting reverse uh, pitch, or the, uh, the uh, beta range on the ground, that uh, I get quite a high prop RPM momentarily. As with anything in Sims, there's always a, a certain compromise required, and uh, it doesn't detract from the way the aircraft handles at all. So this should give me a, a comfortable uh, 10 to 12 knots taxiing speed, and I can advance the thrust levers to slow down if necessary. As we're taxiing out, check the flight controls. 
Mitsubishi is quite unusual in that it, uh, its roll control is provided almost entirely by spoilers on the top surfaces of the wings. It does have uh, ailerons, uh, but they're only used for the, the trim. What that means is if you're flying with any uh, roll input, you're actually adding a significant amount of drag to the aircraft as well. It's important to trim the aircraft uh, in roll as well as in pitch. Most other aircraft you can get away without uh, roll trim for the most part. As we're taxiing out your old uh, runway 08, I'll talk about the um, how I use the flight directors as well. The tutorial says to uh, arm the flight directors into the uh, uh, out select mode and set about uh, I think five to eight degrees nose up pitch. I find it what's easier just to leave uh, everything selected off. I've got a keystroke that arms the uh, autopilot and flight directors, and we'll use that uh, once we've loaded the nose to accelerate. The only keystrokes I've got bound are for the uh, pitch trimmer itself for the autopilot, the little uh, the wheel you can see down there on the autopilot control panel. That's because uh, in reality that's just a, a lever you'd reach down and operate without even having to look at it. So putting that on the keyboard makes it just a little bit easier. So to slow down a little bit, I'll just push my thrust lever forward. It'll bring the actual uh, power levers on the aircraft back. And that's me back down to about eight knots or so. work on the basis that uh, we've been cleared to take off straight away by air traffic. What we'll do is we'll put the uh, stop warning vane heaters on, the pitot heaters on, strobe lights on, landing lights on. I'll leave the tax lights on, I'll talk about that in the climb out, and uh, transponder to alt. Flaps are set, trims are set, and just the uh, pitch mode to change. I've changed the view position ever so slightly. Uh, just for my personal preference, I think you start off somewhere down here as the uh, model comes out of the box. I find it's a little bit easier to fly with the uh, with the eye position just up a little bit. So lining up on runway uh, 08, or maybe the sim calls at 09, I can never remember which way around. We'll come out of the uh, beta pitch here. We'll just stop on the centre line just now. I'll set the brake and we'll talk about the takeoff procedure. So we're going to advance the power levers gradually. I'm looking for just under 100% torque or the red line on the uh, temperature here. Uh, today at sea level, ISA conditions, it'll be the uh, torque limit we're going to get. We're going to rotate at 105 knots regardless of the weight of the aircraft and uh, what I'm going to do is climb out towards uh, 1000 feet above the field. That's going to be uh, 1250 feet. I'm then going to lower the nose and accelerate and clean up the aircraft. It should be uh, quite straightforward hopefully. I'll take the brake off and I'll advance the thrust levers. So there's the power set. Looking for 105 knots. There's 105. Apply some back pressure. Aircraft breaks ground. I hold that attitude. Gears coming up. 
And I'll just adjust the trim ever so slightly. Just maintain the runway heading and I'll maintain the speed just now. Just approaching a thousand feet above the field, I'll lower the nose to around about five degrees. It's a good ballpark there. Put the autopilot flight directors in. Take the first stage of flaps up. I'm passing 150. I go to flap zero. I'll bring the power back to about 80% torque, and I'll bring the propeller RPM back slightly. Put into heading mode initially. Start that turn round. As we approach 160 knots, into IES mode, it will hold 160 IES. Put the landing lights off because they're speed restricted to, to 175. And as we come around the corner, we're going to go outside just a little bit. I'll put it into nav mode, so it's GPS and nav. It will turn around to intercept the uh, track outbound. Once that's done and the power is back, I'll go to uh, the left system for the bleeds to run the pressurisation. And just looking at this yoke here, it's got quite a bit of right roll input in to maintain the turn. So I'll use the uh, trim ailerons just to bring the uh, stick back, or the, the yoke back to the usual position. Just reduce the drag slightly. Once we're pointing roughly in the right direction, I'm going to go back into out cell. That's basically a pitch command. I'll use my keystroke to lower the pitch attitude. Until I get about 500 feet a minute or so. And with 500 feet a minute, I'll click VS just to hold that vertical speed. That will allow the aircraft to accelerate now and uh, climb out as well. So passing through 175 knots, make sure the landing light's off. I'll leave the uh, tax lights on because it uh, just makes us a bit more visible. And uh, good time to run the uh, air conditioning off both systems. You can see it's pressurising there. So I've got uh, maybe 96% uh, RPM, that's what I'm looking for, and about 80% uh, torque. I'm quite happy with that for the climb out. So I used the IAS initially to uh, lock the IAS while I was um, climbing out. Once I was happy, I went into the out select mode, load the uh, pitch attitude using the pitch command wheel, and once I had a vertical speed I was happy with, back into vertical speed and the aircraft's accelerating uh, quite happily. You see I've still got uh, some uh, roll trim required. So I'll use my keystrokes for that. Basically what I'm doing is uh, clicking it off here until the uh, yoke is in the level position. It's a beautiful looking model. Uh, when you consider how old the model is, is uh, relative to X-Plane 10, I think it's older than X-Plane 10 itself. Uh, it's really a really nice looking model. It flies really nicely. Um, the added complexity of the roll trim and the uh, slightly quirky flight control systems is, is really quite interesting. So there's Oyster, the point ahead of us uh, we're flying towards. Then we're going to make a right hand turn. If I look at the flight plan, I'm going to do the GPS approach onto runway 09. Uh, we've got the runway itself coded on here and the uh, final approach fix. What that means is uh, on the Garmin it will give me uh, LNAV plus vertical advisory guidance. It's almost like an LNAV VNAV kind of arrival, although officially you would have to refer to the uh, charts for the vertical guidance. But it actually provides a synthetic glide slope in this model at least, so it's, it's pretty useful. Um, in real life, um, I don't know whether or not that would be a, a feature available with this level of avionics fit. How the GPS uh, steering information gets into the autopilot is uh, different depending on how the aircraft is, is set up. So there's lots of varieties uh, of GNS 530 installation. So approaching a thousand feet to go.
You'll notice quite interestingly that I believe the uh, drum counter on the altimeter here is uh, operating in the reverse sense. Obviously the numbers are indicating correctly, but uh, I'd expect to see these digits roll down the window, uh, just as they'd roll down uh, the display on a primary flight display. Imagine that 4,240 feet is the altitude. As the aircraft climbs, 4,240 feet would actually move down uh, at a level as the aircraft climbs up. So these, uh, these numbers are, are running a little bit in reverse. I've put a post on the uh, X-Pilot forums, but uh, I think because of the age of the model, uh, there's maybe not the same developer interest in it. It's a very small thing, it just it looks a little bit unusual to my eyes, but uh, we can work with it. So the arrival into Guernsey, uh, I'm going to route via a point called uh, Abdus. I'll put the, uh, as I said, the links to the chart in the video description. The final approach descent starts at uh, JB09 Foxtrot, and that's at 2,000 feet. So let's have a look at the flight plan, and uh, we'll just keep an eye on the uh, altitude and the airspeed as well. Let me move the GPS out of the way ever so slightly. In fact, there's a turn coming up, so we'll set 331. I'll go into the VNAV page and I'll say I want to be at an altitude of 2,000 feet. I probably want to be there. Let's aim for four miles before the, uh, the approach point. Let's have a look. What have we got? Uh, it's how I've loaded it here. Okay, before we do that, what I'll do is I'll just go direct to uh, Abdus now. There we go. And then I'll say four miles before the uh, final descent, which is the uh, 09 Foxtrot. I want to be descending at a thousand feet a minute. So I've got a cruise of about two minutes from here. I've done this flight a few times and the flight plan that I loaded had uh, one of the points on the Jersey departure rather than the uh, arrival into uh, Guernsey. So Abdus is just one of the points on the uh, Arnav arrival. I set about 70% uh, torque now. Verify the trim set correctly. And it's all looking good. When you load the approach on the real Garmin, as I select an approach, it would show me uh, on the window whether or not I had LNAV, VNAV capability. This version of the GNS530 doesn't seem to have that, but the easiest way to see if you'll have guidance all the way down to the runway is look for the runway to be coded on the flight plan and another point, usually about four or five miles back, uh, coded with this uh, final approach fix or a, a point number. If you've got the runway, then you should have uh, LNAV plus V guidance. So I don't have uh, the ability uh, to command a vertical speed directly on the aircraft. Vertical speed is just vertical speed hold. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my target altitude of 2,000 feet in the window. I'm going to click it into IAS hold, and then I'm going to gradually bring the power back and as I bring the power back, to maintain the speed it's at, 240 knots, it's going to lower the nose. And I'm looking for about uh, 700 to 800 feet a minute. You could do this by, doing, uh, by going heads down and using the uh, pitch wheel on here. Or you could do it by flying the aircraft, uh, just take the autopilot out and fly it. Either way is good. I quite like this way. about seven eight hundred feet per minute. A little trick is I'll set the uh, vertical speed to slightly less than what's required here Then I'll just click VS mode and then I've got control of the, uh, the aircraft speed again. So about 40% uh, torque you'll see the aircraft starts to slow down and as it slows down the vertical speed required will drop off as well. Obviously the aircraft's not going as fast it doesn't need to descend at the same uh, feet per minute setting. Very simple VNAV uh, as it's implemented on the GNS uh, 530, but that's uh, that's fine by me. As we descend, verify the pressurization set for a thousand feet above the airfield, which it uh, is, and at some point we'll drop the uh, pressurization down uh, to one system and then onto ram air. 
I'll bring the power back. I want to get the aircraft down to about 180 knots just to fly the procedure to make it a little bit easier. So you saw I flew on the departure up to a thousand feet before accelerating. You can do it a lot lower in the Mitsubishi. Uh, it's not generally governed by the same operational rules as what airliners would have. But every single bit of information I found about the Mitsubishi says that to mitigate against the uh, aircraft's uh, complexity, it's basically treat it like a, a much bigger aircraft. Treat it like a jet and manage the aircraft like you'd manage a commercial transport. So that's what we've been trying to do with it. To that end, um, I've set myself some uh, gates. I won't go below 170 knots uh, without the uh, first stage of flap, flap 5. And I won't go below 150 knots without the uh, second stage of flap. So very similar to what we have in the 737 that we've got uh, a minimum speed for that flap selected. Interestingly as well, you'll see the approach speed at flaps 40 is higher than the approach speed at flaps 20. That's because at flap 20 it's 1.3 VREF and flat 40 1.5 VREF that the, the, the uh, manufacturers decided on. So all the approaches I'll do with this aircraft will be flap 20, just to make life straightforward. Setting course uh, 358, I'll put 358 on the window. There's 170, we'll come back to 160, so flaps 5. As we come back to that uh, speed, I'll put the first stage of landing, I'll put the landing lights on and uh, I'll take the air conditioning down to the single system. I'll just adjust the power lever to maintain 160 knots. Always being aware of the, uh, the yoke angle here, because obviously that's spoiler deflection we're seeing there, and I want to use the trim ailerons. So I'll keep it at 160 knots all the way to about 5 miles uh, from the threshold. That's just inside the uh, JB09F here. The secret in this aircraft is to minimise the torque changes if you can. So just uh, once you've been flying it for a little bit, get a feel for the settings uh, you need. I find about uh, 20 to 25% for the final approach works really quite well for the standard 3 degree profile. I'll click into the approach mode as well. Uh, that way it will descend with the uh, glide slope when it's indicated. It will level at 2,000 feet initially. There's Guernsey out there. Final approach track is 088. How the aircraft handles the GPS steering is actually uh, really quite uh, simplistic. Um, but that's, that's not too bad. I mean, the, there isn't the same documentation it should have with a real aircraft on how the GPS and the autopilot interacts. If you want to do some further reading, have a look at stuff called GPS roll steering, uh, and that'll basically give you an insight into how the uh, Garmin unit interfaces with the uh, with the autopilot. See, so I've got LNAV plus V. That means I've got vertical guidance, and it should indicate on the aircraft here. I just watch the speed: 160, 150 is a touch on the slow side at these weights. So just put some power on. And obviously it's a GPS approach, so we'll leave GPS on the CDI here. My final approach speed is going to be about 125 knots. You can run out of uh, pitch trim in this aircraft. The uh, autopilot uh, will bring the pitch trim all the way to the aft stop, but it won't be able to maintain the glide slope. At heavier weights, 130 knots is probably a little bit safer, but I find 125 is uh, okay in smooth conditions. So the point we're going to is the uh, JB09F, two miles away, and we'll descend from there. Obviously we're driving uh, towards the final approach uh, fix at uh, a level platform altitude. We could do this as a, a more uh, continuous descent arrival. But for the first time flying the aircraft uh, in the videos, we'll do it the straightforward way, just so it all makes sense. We've got a little bit more time to talk about it. I've tried doing uh, 180 knots to 6 miles, uh, that works quite well as well, but you've really got to be on top of the aircraft, so we'll keep it nice and straightforward. 160 is a, a good uh, starting point. So as we start down, adjust the power setting, 
make sure the missed approach altitude is there, which uh, 2,000 feet should be fine. Uh, in fact, I think it's 3,000 that guarantee. Let's go for 3,000. There's uh, four and a half miles. I put the gear down, bring the power back. Conditioning to go to ram air. And once we're below 155, which is the uh, limit for flap 20, I'll take flap 20, get rid of that GPS there. So I set the power, there's about 130. I'll just adjust the roll trim ever so slightly. And there we are, about 1,000 feet above the speed, uh, above the field. Final approach speed's there. Power is set, and the uh, roll trim's looking good. We're on the profile here. You can see it's got the trim almost uh, on the backstop there. So we'll just keep flying the aircraft. So what I'll do is I'll fly the final bit manually. I'll click standby. That'll take the autopilot out, leave the flight directors on, and then I'll click it one more time to take it uh, all off. This is the flight director here, and I don't know if that's uh, quite correct. It's showing quite a high pitch attitude, so I tend to just ignore the uh, flight director pitch command. So verify that the roll trim is uh, is set to something sensible. Standby once more time, and uh, that's us. We're flying it manually. One final tweak of the trim with the uh, change in power settings, and we'll just fly the aircraft using the pappies, using the picture on the runway, and looking at the uh, guidance on the, uh, the glide slope indicator, just for a little bit of assistance. Touch low, but uh, still looking okay as far as the picture goes. I've mentioned before that I don't think the Pappies in X-Plane are the best part. They don't really line up that well on some of the runways. 50 feet above the threshold is perfect. Power's coming off. Reverse. There's that prop RPM I told you about. So, put it into reverse, push the thrust lever forward to get max reverse effort. And then coming back. Touch of uh, tow brakes now. Pull the aircraft down. And we'll taxi off. Once we're on the taxiway at a sensible speed, I'll bring the flaps up. On the overhead, I'll uh, flip the landing lights off. Flick the strobes off, we can lose the window heat, the probe heat, and the uh, stall vane heat. We'll put the transponder to standby. We'll taxi in and find somewhere to park. Part behind these uh, Avantes here. It sits in reverse pitch all the way here.
So we'll set the uh, parking brake, it's held on the tow brakes, put the parking brake on, back to ground idle, put on the uh, overhead, turn off the taxi lights. And with that we're ready to shut the aircraft down, so I'll turn off the uh, avionics first of all, let's turn the transponder to uh, off. Push off the avionics master. And what we'll do is, it's uh, dead straightforward to shut down, we'll just uh, flick the switches from uh, run to stop. As we go to the uh, stop position, I want to go to max reverse as well, just to uh, keep the props in the fine pitch. So there's uh, stop. Now I've had this a few times that it won't actually uh, trigger the stop the first time. Put it into reverse. There it goes. It seems to run on sometimes, I don't quite know what uh, what causes that. But there we go. And I mentioned that uh, you'd normally have that back at taxi. I find it more satisfying with the model to leave it uh, in the takeoff land simply because of that uh, RPM shuffle if you come out of uh, reverse uh, or out of the uh, ground range into the flight range. So leaving it uh, takeoff and land for the taxi works for me anyway. Okay, so the uh, engines are stopped. Turn off the uh, electrics. Close the fuel valves. On the overheads, we'll turn the beacon off, nav lights off, turn the seatbelt signs off, turn the aircraft off. That's it, that's the X Scenery Mitsubishi MU2. It's a really fun uh, model to operate. It certainly takes a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of challenge in flying the aircraft. I find it quite difficult to uh, talk through what I'm doing because it's quite a uh, a busy aircraft to operate. There's lots of things to do on it. So it's one of the harder aircraft to, uh, to operate and do videos for. That being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you get any questions about what you saw, um, even the operation of the uh, Garmin uh, 530 rather than uh, perhaps the Mitsubishi itself, then please feel free to get in touch in the comment section. The next video will probably look at uh, a departure out of Guernsey. We'll fly back over to Jersey and uh, fly a straight, uh, straight forward ILS down there. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks.